Dear Rail Lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. Today we begin a series of videos dedicated to the Spanish Railways. A keyword which for us became a synonym for the Spanish Railways is a diverse team. Namely, you can barely find a country with four different track gauges, well-developed high-speed network, fascinating landscapes including beautiful nature, deserts, canyons, sierras and unique villages, and plenty of different rail services provided by several public and private railway operators. As we usually do in this kind of series, this video will deal with the development and overview of the Spanish railways, the next one will cover the development of Spanish high-speed rail system, and the third will show the evolution of Spanish high-speed trains. As always, let's start with the history of railway traffic in this amazing Iberian country. At the beginning of the 19th century, Spain was poor in comparison with other European powers. The relatively late start of the development of the railway system further highlighted the country's economic and technological lagging with respect to other regions of Europe. Although Spain could not stand out with the economic and technological edge, it stood out in the arts. Spain has produced some of the most important artists of the 19th and 20th centuries, such as Francisco Goya, Pablo Picasso and Salvador Dali, whose artworks were sold for millions. And this artist's influence expands far beyond the confines of the canvases they painted on. They are instrumental in informing Spanish architecture, politics and societal ideals. It may seem difficult to put a price tag on that level of influence, but many have. For example, Picasso's painting, Nude Green Leaves and Bust, was sold at Christie's for $106.5 million in 2010. Did you know that the total wealth held in art and collectibles is estimated at $1.7 trillion? And Deloitte predicts that it will increase by $900 billion by 2026. And even better, today's globalized and digitalized world allows you to be an investor in various fine artworks. We're talking about our sponsor Masterworks. With the help of Masterworks, which is already valued at over $1 billion, you can now invest in the fine arts in which world's collectors invest. And what is fantastic, you don't need tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to do that. Why wouldn't you consider this? After all, the Wall Street Journal calls art one of the hottest markets on Earth. In addition, Masterworks is very easy to use. Visit their website, create an account, view their artwork, and you can diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets in the world. If you're interested and want to invest in fine arts, there's a waiting list. But Railways Explained allows you to skip that waiting list and start investing right away using the link in the description. At least check it out, as that will significantly support our production and help us make even better rail-related videos in the future. Enjoy the fine arts and now we return to the first railway in Spain. Although there were earlier attempts, Spain got the first railway in 1848. The state granted a concession to Barcelona businessman José María Roca in 1843 to build a 28.5 km long railway that would connect Barcelona and Mataró. Shortly afterwards, in 1845, the Marquis of Salamanca was awarded a line between Madrid and Aranjuez, covering 49 km. Work on this line began in 1846, but was interrupted at the end of 1847 due to financial difficulties. However, the work continued after obtaining a funding from the Treasury, and the line was finally inaugurated in 1851. Due to a certain degree of disorder and arbitrariness with respect to the concession of new lines, the state administration has become more aware of its need to become more directly involved in the process. It must be underlined that the years between 1850 and 1867 were marked as a period in which important decisions were made which marked the further development of the Spanish railways. The first is the radial development of the railway network, with Madrid at its center. Namely, in 1854, the Congressional Commission defined priority directions that would be subsidized at the public treasury's expense. In order not to list them now, these directions are shown on the screen. Another important decision was to build the Spanish Railways to an unusual broad track gauge of 1,672 mm. It is believed that the choice of gauge was influenced by Spain's hostility to neighboring France during the 1850s. 
namely the idea was to make the Spanish railways incompatible with that of France, in order to hinder any potential French invasion. However, some sources also claim that the decision was made to allow bigger engines, with the idea to have enough power to climb the steep passes in the second most mountainous country in Europe. As a result, Portuguese railways were also built to a broad gauge, roughly the same 1664 mm. In 1955, the problem of interoperability in mind, Spain and Portugal decided to halt this difference of 8 mm and defined their gauge to be 1668 mm, which is now branded as an Iberian gauge. What we would like to emphasize and what is important for understanding the modern age too is that at the end of the 19th century, the construction of narrow gauge railways began to spread, especially in the north and Cantabrian mountains. The reason why the metric width is chosen for the construction of railways is often due to the mountainous topography that prevails in these areas. The main line network was roughly completed by the 1870s. Because of Spain's until recently relative lack of economic development, the Spanish railway network never became as extensive as those of most other European countries. As the year of the beginning of electrification is usually taken 1911, when the Hergal Santa Fe railway line was electrified. After that, we must mention that Spanish Civil War, which lasted from 1936 to 1939, further slowed down the development of the railways. During the war, the railway suffered serious damage. Until 1939, 42% of total locomotives, 40% of total freight wagons, and 70% of total passenger wagons had been destroyed. And to this was added the destruction of a large part of the network's infrastructure, lines, bridges, stations, etc. Shortly after the end of the Civil War, the Francisco Franco's government established a state company, the National Network of Spanish Railways, Renfe which nationalized railway companies that had gauges of 1,668mm. Under its management, 12,401 kilometers of railway tracks remained, many of them damaged by the recent war. The new railway policy under the Franco regime was adopted in line with the guidelines of the 1959 Stabilization Plan. Its objective was to achieve stabilization and liberalization of the Spanish economy. Thus, the path undertaken by the railway in these years will go hand-in-hand hand with what was called the Spanish economic miracle. After the fall of the Franco regime, two things should be pointed out. The first being the question of economic profitability of the network during the 1980s. Based on the fact that 68% of the railway traffic was carried out on only 5,000 of the 13,500 km of lines, a plan was drawn up to gradually close the lines that are not economically profitable. Another important measure was the creation of the business units in 1991, as a result of the in-depth reorganization of Ramfes Railway Services. This would end up making the territorial model based on the zones disappear. Since then, Renfe has focused on three main business units. Commuters intended for large urban areas, Medium distance, intended for transport between short or medium distances by combining service with conventional and high-speed trains, and long distance, intended for long railway distances also with a combination of conventional and high-speed trains. During the 1990s, the railway renaissance on the Iberian Peninsula began with the release of the Alta Velocidad Española, i.e. service of high-speed rail, which will be the topic of our next video. Liberalization of the Spanish rail sector occurred in early 2005, when Renfe was restructured and replaced by two new bodies. The manager of railway infrastructure at DIF, which is in charge of managing the infrastructure and making investments for the construction of new lines. And the Renfe Operadora, in charge of passenger and freight transport in competition with other companies. Originally, the railway operator inherited the management model of the business units of the old Renfe taking charge of those that purely affected the operation of transport services. In January 2006, Renfe undergoes a major internal restructuring, which reduces the operating areas to the following four. General Directorate of Commuter and Medium Distance Public Services, General Directorate of Long Distance Services, General Directorate of Merchandise and Logistics Services, and General Directorate of Manufacturing and Maintenance. 
Currently, and after various modifications since 2013, the Renfe Group has pivoted on four public limited companies that depend on the parent company, as it owns 100% of the capital of the new companies. Renfe Passengers, Renfe Freight, Renfe Production and Maintenance, and Renfe Rolling Stock Lease. In the same year, the narrow gauge company Feve was integrated into Renfe and the DIV. Today, Spain has effectively liberalized its freight services, international passenger transportation and tourist routes, and domestic passenger services. In 2014, a similar operation was carried out with a DIV, when it was divided into two companies a DIV in charge of managing the conventional network and a DIF Alta Velocidad, in charge of the construction and maintenance of the high-speed lines and which inherits the bulk of the previous ADIF. According to the media, the fundamental objective of the segregation is to comply with the modifications made by European system of accounts and the new accounting criteria established therein, which requires public companies to have at least 50% of the expenses covered by business activity, so that liability does not count as a deficit. For this part of the video, we use the annual report of the railway sector for 2019, prepared by the National Markets and Competition Commission, and the annual report of the Transport and Logistics Observatory in Spain. In Spain, there is something called the Railway Network of General Interest, or RFIG. This network is made up of the railway infrastructures that are essential to guarantee a common rail transport system throughout the territory of the country. As of December 31, 2019, the RFIG was 15,392 kilometers, of which 50,372 kilometers belong to ADIF and ADIF AVE, and 20 kilometers to Linea Figueres Perpignan. Of the total kilometers of the network managed by ADIF and ADIF AVE, 62.6% is a single track and 36.3% is not electrified. In addition, about 11.3 thousand kilometers is Iberian gauge, 2600 is normal gauge, about 1200 is meter gauge, and 227 kilometers has mixed gauge, Iberian plus normal. 73% of the RFIG network is used for both passenger and freight services, 21% is used exclusively for passenger services, and 2% only for freight. The intensity of use of Spanish network is below the values reached in other European countries. According to data from IRG Rail's 8th Annual Rail Market Monitoring Report, in 2018, the European average intensity of network use reached 54 train kilometers per network length per day. The Netherlands reached a value of 146, followed by the United Kingdom with a value of 98. In Spain, it is only 35.2, and it is behind Germany with a value of 78, Italy of 55, and France of 43. As we have already pointed out, there are three types of services provided in Spain. Long distance, which include the service of conventional and high-speed trains, medium distance with the same division as the previous, and suburban or commuter services. During 2019, 511 million passengers chose the train as their means of transport, where commuter services continue to be the most important by passenger volumes, accounting for almost 87% of total passengers. As always on the channel, we will stick to the data on inter-regional traffic. In terms of long-distance data, 34.5 million travelers used this commercial service during 2019. The number of passengers on high-speed services amounted to 22.4 million. In contrast, conventional long-distance services, LD from now on, moved a total of 12.1 million travelers, equivalent to 35.2% of the total commercial services market. As you can see on the screen, the largest number of passengers exists on the route from Madrid to Barcelona, Seville and Valencia, where the battle to Barcelona is almost 4.5 million passengers a year. And this is the evolution of these services over the years, where there has been a market increase in rail use. During 2019, Renfe Passengers was the only passenger operator. As we have already pointed out, Spain has liberalized the part of the market segment related to high-speed rail. So, from 2021 on their network operates Railsfera, which is owned by SNCF. Ilsa, which is owned by Air Nostrum and Trenitalia, is planning to start operations in the second half of 2022. 
The number of passengers on medium distance services increased to 33.1 million passengers. High speed medium service Renfe Avant served 8.9 million passengers. On the other hand, services provided on the conventional and metric gauge network was about 24.2 million passengers. As part of this service, most gravitate around Barcelona. There are almost 4 million passengers on the route barcelona girona Cerber. On the screen, you can see the main long-distance and medium-distance rail passenger transport flaws for 2019, which certainly reflects the transport needs of Spanish passengers. At the end of the section on passenger transport, we can say that the share of railways on the basis of total passenger kilometers is around 6.4% and that private car travel is the most dominant. Regarding the rail freight transport, in presented figures only the activity of freight operators that transit through the RFIG network is included. Therefore, regional operators FGC and USCO Train are not included. So, 12 freight operators are active on the RFIG network together with the state Renfe Freight. During 2019, these operators transported about 25.7 million net tons. Renfe Freight transported 17 million tons, while alternative companies transported 8.7. According to the annual statistic report, other regional companies transported a negligible part of 430,000 tons. On the screen you can see that alternative companies have an average growth of almost 12.9%, which means that they are taking over new flaws of goods that are appearing on the market. Another interesting fact, rail freight transport in Spain is in majority domestic transport with about 85% share. On the screen you can see the main flaws of medium and long distance rail freight transport for 2019 according to the share of total net ton kilometers transported. In net tons, the largest flaw continues to be between Barcelona and Zaragoza with more than 1.9 million tons in 2019, followed by the Madrid Valencia link with 1.3 million tons. With this, we hope that we covered all important aspects of the Spanish railways. Of course, we are always open to hear your suggestions in the comment section because you are great viewers and we learn a lot when you supplement our videos with quality comments and new information. This was the story of the Spanish railway system on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel and to help our production consider becoming our patron. Until the next time, goodbye.